So on the one hand, we have the Canon EOS R50 for about 700 bucks. And on the other hand, we got the Canon EOS R10 for just under a thousand bucks. So what are the real differences between these two cameras? And is the Canon R10 worth the extra 300 bucks or not? Let's find out. So let me start out by saying that both of these cameras are most definitely amazing for the price. They're both 24 megapixel APS-C cameras that have most things in common, but they also have five major differences that are gonna be the main factors to consider when choosing between the two. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly if you should go with the R10 or save 300 bucks and go with the R50 instead. Now don't let the budget price of these cameras deceive you because they're both capable of giving you professional results, both for photography and videography. And after I help you decide which of these two cameras are gonna be the better fit for you, I have plenty of videos that you can watch that are gonna teach you the skills that you're gonna need to get the most out of your new camera. Now me personally, I'm doing mostly video these days and find myself doing less photography than I used to. So let's start with the differences in video capabilities first. Both cameras can shoot 4K footage up to 30 frames per second. And the most common frame rate in which most videos are shot in is 24 frames per second. And for the most part, most people agree that it looks the most cinematic. But you do have a small percentage of videographers that prefer to shoot in 30 frames per second. But not to worry, because both cameras can give you 4K 24 and 4K 30. So no real differences there. However, if you want to shoot footage that's intended to be used as slow motion, then you're going to have to shoot at 60 frames per second. And that's where our first major difference lies. The R10 can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, whereas the R50 can only shoot 60 frames per second in 1080 mode. And what that means is that the slow motion from the R10 is going to be sharper than the slow motion from the R50. But keep in mind that when you switch the Canon R10 to 4K 60, you're going to get an additional crop of about 50% which means that the camera is going to automatically zoom in a bit. Also, the 4K 60 frames per second coming out of the R10 is going to be slightly lower quality than the 4K 24 and the 4K 30, but at least it gives you the option to shoot slow motion in 4K, whereas the R50 only allows you to shoot slow motion in 1080. So to sum that up, the R10 is going to give you slightly better slow motion than the R50. The next major difference between the video capabilities of these two cameras is that the R50 has a one hour record limit. All this means is that when you record for one hour consecutively, the camera is going to stop recording and you're going to have to get up, go over to the camera and hit the record button again. This isn't really a big deal in most scenarios because most people are going to shoot short clips and piece everything together in the edit. However, if you need to shoot long uninterrupted takes for things like sporting events or podcasts, this may be a deal breaker. The R10 on the other hand gives you a two hour record limit, which is going to be plenty for most people. But there is a caveat to that. When I tested my R10, I was able to get two hours out of it, shooting in 4K fine mode at 24 frames per second. But I've heard from other people that their camera stopped recording right after about an hour due to overheating. Now they may have been shooting in a different frame rate or in a hotter climate, but in my tests, I was able to get the full two hours out of it. So to sum that up, technically speaking, you should be able to get two hours of continuous recording out of the R10 versus the one hour record limit on the R50. The next major difference between the Canon R10 and the R50 is that the R10 has a more professional body. The R10 body is just slightly larger, which makes the grip feel better in your hands. The difference in weight is only seven grams, so both cameras are very lightweight. But for that additional seven grams, the R10 is giving you twin dials, a lot more buttons, a joystick to help you focus, as well as a dedicated button to switch between manual and autofocus. The R50 is intended to be used primarily through the touchscreen, whereas the R10 can be used through the touchscreen, but also has many of the dials and the knobs that you find in more higher end professional cameras. This isn't a big deal for video shooters, but it's a pretty big advantage when it comes to photography. And speaking of photography, that's where I think the R10 really starts to outshine the Canon R50. Not only due to its body design, but mainly due to its faster burst rate and faster buffer speed. 
The R10 can give you 23 photos per second in electronic shutter mode, while the R50 only gives you 15 shots per second. The R10 also has a mechanical shutter option, while the R50 only offers you electronic shutter. And what that means for you is that the R10 is going to be a better photography camera, especially in scenarios where you need to shoot fast moving subjects like high action sports. Now whether you intend to do photography or videography, to get the most out of your camera, you're gonna wanna color grade your footage and edit your photos. And this is really gonna give your images that extra pop. But the downside is that you can spend hours tweaking the colors to get the look that you want. Which is why I put together my Filmic Love Pack and Lightroom Profile Pack, which you can download for only 15 bucks off of my website. And if you're new to cameras and you feel overwhelmed by all the technical terms and the jargon, feel free to leave me any questions you might have down in the comments comment section. Also let me know your thoughts. Are you leaning more towards the R10 or the R50? As far as I'm concerned, I'd save the 300 bucks and just go for the R50, unless I was planning on primarily using the camera for photography or if I needed to shoot videos that have to be longer than an hour. I left links to both cameras in the description below, as well as links to other gear that I found to be valuable. Now keep in mind that both the R50 and the R10 are APS-C cameras, and if you can stretch your budget to about 1500 bucks, you could go with a full frame camera instead. And if you're not familiar with the differences between full frame and APS-C, then I highly suggest you watch this video next where I explain the differences in simple language. Make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. I appreciate you watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one. It's Fulan Creative and I'm out. Peace.